Well, hello, my friends. Hello, hello, hello. I am so glad that you could make it. It is Monday, May 14th. And what does that mean? That means it's time for another episode of The Palaver. The wonderful, the one, the only, the podcast brought to you live on twitch.tv slash dose rev. I am your host, Dose Rev, and I'm super excited today to talk to the sexy, the sultry, the smooth, the suave, James Anarchy. How's it going? You know, I always say James Anarchy. It's James X Anarchy, right? I don't mind. I don't mind. The X is only there because of, like, gamer tag issues. Because I switched from Xbox to PlayStation and couldn't bring over my old tag so that the X is there because that's the only way I could get my name in. Yeah. So it just stuck. It just stuck. Eh. Well, you know, I'm just going to call you James. Yeah, just, yeah. I don't you know, know if I told this my, uh, I have a brother yeah. named James. But we are probably the best people on the planet. I'm just going to throw that out there. James is real. Just throw it out there. I, 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 I'm just talking about my brother James now, and I'm going to have to disagree with that comment. I love my brother James, but uh, best people on the planet? Maybe not so much that? Maybe? I don't know, James. Uh, James, you, however, are a fantastic person. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to Rachel Rabbit for the biddies. I, I, I have gotten to the point where I turn off alert notifications for the palaver just because... They were popping up and blocking the guests, and no one wants that. But thank you very much for the biddies, and thank you very much, Rock, for the raid. As uh, you guys are just coming in, this is Rev's Palaver Podcast, and I'm talking to the wonderful, the one, the only, James Anarchy. Yeah, and uh, you guys have already, we've already been, like, just shooting the shit for, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. I don't know, we've, we've, like, covered, like, half the topics that you wanted to talk about before we even started. <laughs> I mean, do we do we jump right back in and get right back into Viking rape? Or do we do we reset the board? I mean, that's where we were at before we went live. We were talking about how the Vikings just came and just raped everyone. Everyone. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. You're the host. It's you, you, you steer it. You're the one that steers the ship. So no, let's get to the important stuff. Yes. Okay. So up until about a month ago, I had never heard of Iron Brew. <laughs> yeah. And I have since been educated by literally every Scotsman I know how wrong I was on that. Would you like to explain what Iron Brew is and why it is so culturally important to your people? So so I'm from the beautiful nation of Scotland, you know, God's country, the gift to the whole world. And basically, Iron Brew is our national drink. Like, you can... As I said to Rev, you can insult a Scotsman about his wife, his mother, his kids, even his pets, and he'll be like, meh. But as soon as you go to Bad Mouth Iron Brew, that's when the fists are drawn. So you don't you don't go there with Iron Brew. Iron Brew is untouchable. It's just it's just yeah, it's it's heaven in a bottle. That's the best way to describe it. It's just, you know. See, now I've been told that it tastes like a, a mixture between cough syrup and toxic waste, but it's the best <laughs> mixture you could ever imagine. Now, that's a description given to me by a Scotsman who, who had very similar feelings that he would fight you if you badmouthed it. But the description of cough medicine and toxic waste doesn't sound particularly appealing to me. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a hard, I've never, this is the thing. Like, so like Pepsi tastes like Coke. And like all lemonades taste like all lemonades, but there is nothing, nothing at all that tastes like Iron Brew. Like there's just nothing as far as like I. So I have some friends I met through Twitch, and we, me and Rachel, sent them like a care package for Christmas, and it was like a Scottish care package, and it had Iron Brew in it. And when they got it, they opened it up and said, "What is this?" And I was like, "We'll open it." So we did it through video call, so we could watch them. And he took a sip of Iron Brew and he went, "Oh my god, that tastes like a, a Korean drink, but I can't think what it's called." And he was like, well, "That's amazing." And I was like, "Yeah," but I was like, "I've never tasted anything that even resembles, even slightly, what Iron Brew tastes like." It's such a hard drink to explain. You just need to drink it. That's that's it. I'll I, send you some. I, I promise you. So yeah, after this, I am going to send you some. I've looked on Amazon, and you can buy it on Amazon. But it is expensive. Oh, like, hell yeah. I keep telling myself, I'm going to go to Wegmans. Wegmans is a local uh, grocery store chain in, in mm -hmm. western New York where I live. 
And they have a massive international food section. So I keep thinking to myself, I should go to Wegmans and just walk through and see if they have it there. Mm-hmm. But I don't because I know whatever. I know some American places do have it. Like so, my one of my good friends, uh, childhood friends, he has family out in America, and he was just casually walking down the street one day and walked past the shop, and there was just Iron Brew in the shop, and he's like. You guys have this here, and the last he was like, "Yeah, we're one of the only shops like in the vicinity that has it." But yeah, it's quite popular here. And he's like, "That's like Scotland's national drink." You don't understand how how happy I am that you have this drink in here. And he literally bought pretty much her entire stock whilst he was on holiday. He's like, "I'll buy it all right now." I will so, just just give it all to me. I want yeah. all of it. No one else will appreciate it like I will. Give it to me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I know, and and uh, now. The other thing, too, is next week I'm going to have Mr. Crafty Killer on the Palaver, and he's another Scotsman, so I plan on asking him about it and getting his thoughts. But, you know, this coming Saturday, I'm going to a Team MZ meetup and I up in Rochester. And mm-hmm. as I drive there, I will be driving past a Wegmans. If I have enough time, I think I'm going to make a point to stop at Wegmans and just I'll just walk through the international section and see if they have it. So don't send me any until you've heard back from me after wait, this past weekend. Wait. I'll see if I can pick some up. I understand Iron Brew, Nectar of the Gods, Giver of Life. <laughs> I got it. I got keep it. Your, keep your head ginger, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I, I imagine that it's much the way I feel. About, oh, here's the important question. Is it caffeinated? Oh, I don't know, actually. That's a good point. I've never actually read to see if it is caffeinated. Uh, no, I don't think it is caffeinated. Ugh, what's the point, then? I don't know. Oh, no, it is caffeinated. Yeah, oh, no, it okay. is. Yeah. There you go, it is. Yeah, like, most fuzzy wh- drinks are. Why would you fair. want to drink anything that doesn't have caffeine in it? <laughs> to be fair, that's true. I mean, I'm not a huge coffee drinker, though. I, don't, I never drink coffee. I'm a tea, and, like, I don't, I don't drink coffee. I never have done. I don't know why. I just... Yeah, it's one of those drinks I just could never, never get with. I love it. Cat mouth is like, bro, like people who know Iron Brew, I just they, they rally around it. Cat mouth is like, bro, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's also a great hangover cure. Crazy Tinkerbell says, okay, I'm gonna take your word for it. I mean, I've always been of the opinion, honestly, the best hangover cure is the most painful one, which is exercise. You drink a ton of water, you wake up, you're hungover, you drink a ton of water, and then you go out and run for an hour. Like, you just run, and you just sweat everything, and it hurts like hell for 45 minutes or so. You come home, and you take a cold shower, and then it's in your, in the, and then the hangover's totally gone. See, I would, my, see, when I was younger, when I used to, when I actually used to drink quite a lot, my hangover cure, and I used to do this all the time, if I knew I was going out for a good session... I would go to the shop, buy one. You could get glass bottles of Iron Brew that are like a liter bottle. And you put that in the fridge. You'd go out and you'd buy yourself like a cheeseburger on the way home. And you'd let and you'd come home. You wouldn't eat it. You'd let it go cold. You'd wake up the next morning, grab that cold bottle of Iron Brew out the fridge, get that cold cheeseburger. There's your hangover cure. Worked every time. Well, it does make sense because you've got caffeine, you've got sugar, and you've got proteins, and you've got fats. All these things are putting back in your body. And of course, the hydration from the, the iron brew i mean it does make sense but i found if you just super hydrate and then sweat the shit out of your system that that always works it's my surefire hangover cure even on days when i'm like oh i can't i can't go out for a run <laughs> i'll go out in the backyard and do like yard work or something to sweat and uh too much punishment, too much punishment. but the point is though is it's punishment for 45 minutes to an hour and mm. then you're fine like, you know, That's like, as opposed to if you eat greasy food and, like, you feel better, but you're still hung over the whole day. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Just you know, like, if right. you go back when we were doing all the drinking streams, there were streams where I was doing 20, 30 drinks, you know, over six hours. And uh, I was pretty goddamn hammered. And then the yeah. next day I'd be like, oh, I don't feel well. But then I'd come back and by noon I'd be fine. That's why. You just... You you get you get the pain out of the way and then you're fine, you know. Yes. I don't know. Chinese buffet is the best hangover cure, dude. Let me ask you a question. Do you have Mongolian barbecue up in Scotland? Have you? No. Oh my god, it's the best thing ever. It's like this giant, like 
five foot wide metal planchette that's a circular grilling service, right? It's like solid oh. stainless steel, right? Oh. And the whole thing is hot and you you get you go to the buffet and you get all these raw ingredients, chicken, beef, all the veggies, whatever. You get your sauces, you put all this stuff on a plate and then you hand the guy the plate. And then he puts it on the planchette and using these two really long wooden sticks, he stirs it around and he cooks it right there in front of you. It's so good. Mongolian barbecue. It's the best. Yeah, I'm so hungry right now, now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wife and I had Brinner. So we had breakfast for dinner. We had eggs and uh, home fried potatoes and toast. Stop talking about food, man. Go All right. Ahead. Let's yeah. we can we can switch topics. We'll get off the we'll even we'll get off the iron brew with the promise that I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get some this weekend. If if they sell it at Wegmans. I'll make you a deal before we get off it. I'll make you a deal. Sure. If you can't find any, I will send you some. And then you can do a stream where you unwrap your iron brew present and drink the bottle on stream and then we can all watch you either fall in love with iron brew or go, Oh my god, what is this crap? <laughs> Dude! Oh my god. Okay, if I do find it, you're right. I've got to do the Iron Brew on stream. If I can yeah. get it this Saturday, I'll drink it for the very first time when I'm talking to uh, Mr. Crafty Killer. Because as a Scotsman, he'll be able to appreciate it. Yes. Here's a, Okay, here's a question. Warm or cold? Cold. Oh, okay. cold. Not, definitely not warm. Hair, do not drink it warm. You will not know. All right, all right. Let's, moving on. The other thing I want to talk about. So, people who are watching here, they know about my communities. I've been in Team MZ since uh, 2016, beginning of 2017. And mm -hmm. that's my first community. Then I started my own community, the Proper Nerds, as you know. And I'm also really closely involved with uh, Prepare for the Mediocre and the Daily Grind. And you, my friend, started your own wonderful community. Why don't you tell anyone who's watching... A little bit about your amazing community well so basically what it was so because of the proper nerds and i love the proper nerds and, and the proper nerds love, love you this is very true and i love the way that they do things and all that and i thought but it was i didn't really game a lot of game like i didn't really i was never on with them at the same time so it's hard to game with some of them but i met through the proper nerds i met somebody called Umega, and through Umega's channel i met uh, some awesome people who I just gamed with all the time. I was always on with them. We were always having a laugh, but we always were just jumping in and out of each other's discords. And we all just sat one day and said, why don't we just make our own discord? And if it's only just for us, then fine. But if we can maybe get one or two other people in and we could help them grow their channel, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, that's what we want to do. So me and six other uh, people co-founded Chaos Streaming, um, which kind of has like a Greek mythology feel to it because we use like the chaos symbol. Uh, the Greek chaos symbol as like our logo. Um, so it was me, Wild One, uh, uh, Big Candizzle, Missy, Reaper actually one. Uh, Katie Reaper the one actual. Reaper one actually, sorry. Uh, Katie the Turtle and my beautiful wife, Rachel Rabbit. We all co founded it and yeah, it's just exploded. Like we were only expecting to get like the people we knew in and that would be it. We weren't expecting it to be like a big deal. But over like the last month, um, maybe, but maybe the last month it has. We've, I think we've got maybe about fifty, maybe sixty members already. That's all. dude. And, and I'm going to tell you something. I I don't know everyone in cast streaming that well. Like I yeah. I'm going to be honest. I don't really know Big Candizzle. But yeah. dude, Reaper one actual dude. Whenever I oh, watch that guy streams, he cracks me up. He's such a great guy. Katie the Turtle was one of my very first ever followers. We stole like, her. Well, <laughs> you didn't steal her. What happened was I used to stream at nights and then I went to days and I stream now when she's asleep. So, you know. Yeah, we swooped in there. Yeah. We, we, we were like, we need her. We were swooping in. We're taking that. I love Katie. <laughs> Obviously you, um, I don't know. I don't know your wife, Rachel, that well, unfortunately. Um, who else? Who else did you say? There's uh, one uh, other person. Wild one and Missy, oh, what? Missy, dude, Missy. Wild One. I watch Wild streams all the time. Like when I'm getting ready for bed, I'm like, dude. What's up, Lurk Mode? And then I just have him on as I'm doing it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's there playing Fortnite on that monitor as I'm doing Photoshop on this monitor. Like, I just lurk in his channel all the time and hang out. I yeah. love so many of the people in Chaos uh, Streaming. You guys, you have such an amazing community. And, and again, I, I don't know Big Candizzle that well, but um, yeah. everything I've heard about him, he's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say right now, I mean, I love all of them to death, but I will say, and I, and I say it to him all the time, Wild One is my senpai. 
he is like one of the one of the main streamers that I you hate that I'll say this on this you'll be like oh my god why are you being like this but he is something that I really do look up to like I love his streams the way he interacts with his chat and that's why me I think me and him clicked so quickly because I just I think we both have a really dirty sense of humor so we both clicked on that and then we both just had, like having a good time laughing we play similar games and I just he's somebody that I look up to and he was like do you want to do like a discord with me and a few others I was like yes please yes I want to be a part of that so much so yeah and then I need to also say the wife has done a lot of the work in there like she's done a lot of like she's done the, the customer mode that we now have in our discord she's done all the like the channel uh, pictures and all that as well so yeah it is it's it, it started off as just like a place for us all to hang out in one place so we when we game it was all easy to meet up and it's now slowly become this really kind of c- community that we weren't expecting it to be right and it's so good to become a community and we've helped so many people already grow and it's just yeah it's become awesome i love it i'll just say to chat uh i just put the link in chat of the tweet uh if you want to throw that tweet out there i did use the chaos streaming hashtag so hopefully that gets out there uh, and if you don't know chaos streaming click on the chaos streaming hashtag in the tweet and get to know some of these people because really like i said they're just some of the best people i know i have known katie the turtle almost as long as i've been streaming on twitch and she is just i mean like when i when i met her she would hang out my streams because she was holding her newborn in one arm and like playing games with her other hand and uh, I don't want to say his name on stream because I yeah. don't know how much he gives away. But now he's like two, I think. Yeah, he's running around in the background screaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now he's running around, and you can like yeah. if you hear her streaming, you can hear him running around. And I'm like, yeah, he was a newborn when I yeah. met you. Like, like it's weird to think that, you know. But I, I actually, <laughs> I actually just had one of those moments where uh, this past Sunday was Mother's Day. And so I had the in-laws over and my nephews were there and they were talking about how the one older of the two nephews is 17 now and he's getting ready to graduate from high school. And I go, God, it seems like when I, it seems like when I met you, I said to my wife, when I met you, he was only six years old. And she goes, yeah, it does. She goes, no, wait, he was dummy. I'm like, I know that's the joke. (laughs) Yeah. Time passes. What are you going to do? The women women folk. eh? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did get my sister in law real well. Uh, she she was in the living room and I came down the hall and uh, her name is April. So I was like April, and she kind of looked at me like, "You mother of two beautiful children, happy Mother's Day." <laughs> like, she thought I was pissed. Yeah, you're Whatever. evil. You're an evil man. I know. I know. I try though. I try. That's what I'm gonna say. I try. So, anyways, um, how's your streaming going? How have things been going in your neck of the woods? You know, it's uh, good. I must admit, yeah, it's good. Um, like, so obviously we just moved house, so I had to take a little break from it. Um, obviously for the last couple of weeks because we've just moved in. Hence, whilst the wall, the wall's bare just now, and it will look much better in the future, hopefully. Chat, I'd like you to know something. That painting that's over his left shoulder there. He literally hung that up three minutes before the camera went on. Like I didn't want a white wall, okay? Just leave it. Just leave it. Okay, leave Because I, I, I even said to him, I'm like, are you sitting in a corner? Is that why the walls are two different colors like that? And he goes, oh, hold on. And he went and got a painting and hung it up just to add a little more visual complexity to the screen. Yes. Yeah. Then take some focus off this thing and, you know, put some focus over here instead. <laughs> You know, so <laughs> it, it works. It works. Yeah. I have to say, actually, I really like the diagonal stripes. Was the wall like that when you moved in, or did you yeah. and Rachel do that? Yeah. No, no, it was like that when we moved in. But we both kind of agreed because we were going to redecorate. But then we both, I did a stream. I did a PC. Uh, I did a normal stream, and she said that this, the, the the it looked really good as a background. And then I kind of agreed. I was like, yeah, I must admit, when I was streaming, I did catch it a couple of times. Like my eyes caught it. And I thought it actually doesn't look that bad. So I think when we get our shelves that are going to sit, like, going along the wall, we might just leave them open back so you can still kind of see the diagonal things part and then have all the figures and all that as well, so... Yeah, I think I think it's pretty cool. It, what do they call that, a uh, focus wall or a feature wall or something feature like that? Wall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's nice. It adds a little visual complexity. It's it's nice. Uh, yeah. One of the one of the people in Team MZ, I don't know if you know him, Tusser Prime, uh, great guy, great guy. 
and he sits kind of with a corner behind him, and he's got stuff, you know, behind him. But uh, yeah, looking at that, I'm like, oh, you know, I think that's that's nice because both of his walls are blank. But while he's got a lot of stuff on the walls, just to have that little accent wall, that's kind of nice. So, did you buy this? Or did you just buy a house? Is it or no, did you? So we so we were renting. We were looking to buy, um, but then because my uh, my mum, who's crazy Tinkerbell. That most people know now on air is my mother um she has like a bad knee that's why she lives with me and the wife now and um, we were rushing to try and buy somewhere because we didn't know how quickly she was going to get operated on for her new knee um and but it ended up happening really quickly so the turnaround was really quick so then we decided that we just find somewhere to rent for now while she's recovering so we found this place so yeah so we'll be here for a good couple of years hopefully and then maybe either buy this or buy somewhere else hopefully fingers crossed do you mind if i and of course if this is you know you don't have to answer that how how old are you how old i'm 29 oh yeah you still got a couple more years i mean uh so let's see my wife and i just bought our house when i was 35 that's the first you know it's i mean you know we were renting up until then yeah you know um we were we were definitely ready, and in fact, you know what's funny? We always said we found our forever home. We love our house. Yeah. But um, behind our house, there's this giant wildland, like nature preserve that's owned by the town, mm-hmm. and um, this big mega corporation that does uh, land development for like shopping malls and shopping oh, right, centers yeah. and stuff. Just put in a bid just this past week to buy no. all of that land. And so now we're speculating. We're like, well, we don't want to live next to a mall or shopping center, you know? And it's and weird. Well, like we really thought this was going to be our, our forever home. But one of the reasons we like this is because it's got this beautiful wooded area behind us, you know? Yeah. I don't know. So even if you think you found the perfect forever home, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, this is true. Very true. Although uh, we are, we are speculative that if that does happen, they might offer to buy, like, there's actually only about 10 houses on our street. Yeah. They might offer to buy up these houses to get the full frontage uh-huh. so they, they can get the street, you yeah. know, all that area. And if they do, they usually pay pretty well. Yeah. Oh. Rev's got the dollar signs in his eyes. Like, Ching! <laughs> you know, I mean. Every cloud has a silver lining. It's a way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't think I'm gonna find I'm not gonna move somewhere that's got worse internet than what I've got at at the you know at the worst it'll be the same as what I've got now so yeah yeah you know what are you gonna do? Catmouth uh, says I'll call in a toxic waste scarier county. I got you, fam. <laughs> Thanks, Catmouth. <laughs> Thanks. It's got my back. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's it's fun though when you when you get into that. I'll tell you what, man, because you seem like the kind of guy who's a little like me where. You're handy, but not really an expert, you know, at being handy. I mean, yeah. I mean, I like to I like to turn my hand to things, but I'm like so flat pack furniture. Right? This is what it's there. basically. Rachel's pretty much built every flat pack thing in this house since we've moved in, and it was only the other day when her and my mum were out doing a couple of things out that I built her desk for her, and I actually built it. And they came home and I was like, I built your desk for you. And they were like, wait, you built the desk? I was like, yeah, and, like, and, it's t- and it's together? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you didn't rage? I was like, no. And they were like, wow, well done. And I was like, thanks, guys. I was impressed with myself. Well, I'm going to tell I you agree. something. If you get your own house, dude, that stumpy Y chromosome is going to kick in. And what? all of a sudden, you're going to be like, uh, uh, dad mode, must fix house. And all of a sudden, like, you'll, you'll, you'll get this weird thing that will happen to you where it's like, oh, this is my house. Now I fix. And you'll start... <laughs> Believe me, it's the weirdest thing. Like, you'll start throwing yourself into these projects. Like, I think I'm going to rip apart the bathroom and retile everything and then put up new walls. Like, Rachel, I tell you now, I would love to be that kind of guy, but as soon as I picked up a hammer and, like, a chisel or something to start chipping away, Rachel would be like, what are you doing? Put that down. You're not touching anything. I'm sorry. Got to listen to her. She feeds me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't be surprised if it happens. And when it happens... I know Rachel's going to come to me and be like, Rev, make him stop. And I'll be like, I can't. I can't. It's it's the testosterone. It's the homeowner. Something about being a man and being a homeowner and owning tools. Just 
X plus Y plus Z equals tools. You know, like I'm not, I'm just gonna let you know right now. I'm I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> Renting is a different thing, man. I, I rented yeah. my whole life. And even though I could do home repairs, I was like, fuck it. I'm calling the landlord. I don't, I don't deal with that shit. Now yeah. I've got more, like my basement is just full of tools that I got at yard sales. And anytime any, like literally my hot water in, in the master bathroom is running slow. And I was looking at it the other day and I'm like, you know, I can't do it this weekend, but I think the weekend after, I'm going to shut the water off to the house and rip that out and uh, go buy a new place. She's like, can't you just replace the valve? I'm like, no, nope, got to gotta rip the whole thing out. Got to rip the whole thing out. It's got to it's gotta come out. She's like, it's going to be what? a three, four day project. Just yeah. leave me alone. <laughs> no, I can do it. I can tell you exactly how much time it's going to take. So in my mind, it's a two hour project that will cost not very much money, like 50 bucks, 20 to 50 bucks. The rule of home improvement is triple the cost and quadruple the time of whatever you suspect. So since in my head, it's a two hour project, it's probably an eight hour project. And since I'm thinking it's 20 to 50 bucks, it'd probably be like a hundred to 120 bucks. That's good. That's yeah. so you got it worked out. You got it worked out. It's all good. Yeah. But that that's the rule. And, and however many trips to the hardware store you think it's going to need, at least t- twice that. You, you ne- There's always <laughs> something else that comes up. Like I'm in my head, I'm thinking, okay, all right, I'll use Plex line plumbing or Pex plumbing and I'll use snap fit and then that way I won't have to deal with soldering copper pipe and yeah, <laughs> you know, I'll do this and I need a new valve. And my wife's like, the hot water still works, baby. I'm like, but it doesn't work well. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, yeah. Like we, see, we, I, I'll tell you one thing though about this place that I've actually fallen in love with more than anything, right? Now, as a big man yourself, tall big man yourself, I don't know if you're a bath person or a shower person. Shower all the way. I don't t- take baths. Baths are for old women. Sorry, no offense, yeah. but. No, no, you're fine. So, but I've been, I've had to, so obviously, I find it hard to bath because when you're six foot three and you get into a bath, nine times out of ten, your legs either, you should go to stretch your legs out, but pretty much from your kind of half up you're out the water or when you put your half in your legs are completely out the water yeah our, our new place i can literally stretch out in the bath fully legs submerged and half my body submerged and i'm just like this is heaven it was I, the best thing in the world i haven't had a bath like i, I, I have had like one or two baths since me and rachel being together apart from that it's always been showers always been showers and when we moved in i got in this bath i was like oh my god this is heaven this is so nice dude one of the first projects i did in this house i started before we actually took possession of the house we had permission the guy that was selling it to us let us come in and do work in the house i tore out the bathtub that was in the master bathroom and i installed a double shower so there's two shower heads on either end that sounds good yeah um the only time i ever take baths is when i'm sick uh, like some about being sick, I just want to like surround myself as much as possible with hot water. But yeah, I'll tell you another thing, James. Regarding that sticking me out, losing seventy pounds, there's a lot more room in the tub. You know, um, I'll I'll tell you, man. If you ever want to lose weight, I am a lazy motherfucker. It was all just mental change. It was just mental change. Yeah. The biggest thing was portion sizes. Just the portions and through the weight fell although i've plateaued man i've been stuck between 225 and 230 forever but i mean down from 300 feels good you know I must admit, me and uh me and rachel are looking to lose weight but we are big foodies so we do like our food and that is that is that is like the number one thing fizzy juice doesn't help fizzy juice is like one of the worst things but then, like, food as well. Like, we do eat healthy, but, like, we... Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's lies. Lies. <clears throat> Dude, I, I, I drink it all the time. I mean, yeah, I could probably lose another 5'10 if I just stopped drinking that and drank water. But I'm not giving up my Diet Coke. It's not going to happen. Dude, if I was to cut this stuff out and just stop drinking this and, like, Coke, I'd probably drop easy, like, 10 pounds. Easy. Yeah. But I just can't. It's so hard. And we have had it out of the house. And then it's like two weeks later, it's all back in again. And we're just like. So, you know, another thing. So, my wife and I got this mentality stop looking at food as like live to eat and start looking at food as like, well, you eat to live. You know, and I know yeah. that's cliche, but you just start looking at food like, well, 
I'm going to eat just what I need because this is what I need. And I know this is all I need. And that's it. And, and my wife and I love food, dude. We love food. So here's what we did. Friday night, one meal a week is our cheat meal. Yeah. And then one meal a week we get to have for one meal, whatever the fuck we want. And so we still get to indulge that food, you know, quality. And then yeah. the rest of the week, so if it's like Sunday and I'm like, oh, I want potato chips. I'm like, no, you don't get potato. I can tell myself. I'm like, no, you don't get potato chips. You just had your cheat meal Friday night. It was just a couple days ago. So you don't, you've you got to be good you you because you just had that. And then by like yeah. Tuesday or Thursday, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if I'm like, oh, I want a bad meal. I'm like, no, no, no. You've got to eat healthy, but it's okay because in two or three days you get your cheat meal. Yeah. And doing that has been instrumental because I love the food. So, yeah. See, like I said, yeah, that's super, like, we love our food. And I think that's that's the one thing that we struggle with is that we both, like, me and Rachel both, like, like we're happy with a big portion. So it's trying to go from, like, that big portion and slowly cut it down so we're more. Like, there was one time where we were starting to eat, like, a dinner, but on, like, a small, like, sandwich plate. Mm-hmm having our dinner on so then because then it didn't look empty it looked really the plate looked really full so then in your head you're thinking well there's a lot of stuff on that plate right but in fact you actually had cut the portion down so it wasn't that much and it was working for a while but inevitably we fell back into it and we were like oh no more food but we'll get there yeah it's um, wait you know the other thing too is it that's tough is that when so again I, i'm gonna just make the assumption that it's much like me and my wife mm-hmm. when i was trying to eat healthy but my wife wasn't it didn't work you yeah. know, I'd be like, yeah, I'm just going to have it. Now, that being said, salad is one of my favorite food. I love eating a Caesar salad. Caesar salad, probably mm-hmm. one of my top favorite foods in the world. So yeah. I'm like, I'm going to have a Caesar salad for dinner. And she's like, okay, I'm going to have a cheeseburger. And I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm going to have a cheeseburger then. I'm not going <laughs> to, like, as good as a Caesar salad is, it's not a bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. You yeah. know, like. I mean, like, that is true. I mean, like, me and Rachel are like that. Like, if. I'm doing really if I'm trying to be really healthy and then she's not like I just click back into being not healthy and it's vice versa so same with working out like if I get into the mood to work out I drag her with me whether she wants to or not so she'll come and work out with me but then as soon as I stop she's like oh, I'll stop and then if she tries to get back into it and I can't be bothered it's like it, I've always especially in a couple if one half of the couple isn't doing it and the other half is it's so much harder yeah, but if you both do it. It's easy as hell. Like it's just, it's so easy if you both decide to do it. But it's just hard maintaining it because you've got bad routines. Yeah. So, so in, yeah, in, in my in my wife's case, you know, she went to the doctor and they're like, yeah, and I don't want to go into the medical thing, but they're like, yeah, uh, yeah, you're going to X Y Z if you don't lose weight. You and they're, they're, she's like, oh, well, what are the options? And it was option A is really bad. Option B is even worse. Or option option C lose. 40 to 80 pounds. And she's like, mm-hmm. well, that those all sound terrible, but I guess losing weight sounds the least terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were happy fat. We were happy fat. But that being said, I'm way happier now. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, well, how do we get here? I, I feel like worry. I'm lecturing you and I don't mean to be. No, no, you're not lecturing me, but I don't understand how we got to this point, but we got here. I don't mind that we got here, but we got here. <laughs> oh, look, it's Katie the Turtle, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Hello, Katie the Turtle. How are you? I was actually just saying to my wife, so I was saying earlier, Katie, I'll, I'm going to repeat myself, so to anyone who heard this, I apologize. I was saying to my wife earlier, I was talking to her about chaos streaming, and... Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, they got some great people, Wild One and James and Katie the Turtle. And she goes, wait a second, Katie the Turtle? And I go, yeah. She goes, she she's one of yours. I go, well, first of all, first of all, when you're a Twitch streamer, no one is yours. Like, they are your viewer as long as they want to be there. And that's the end of that. Like, no one is your viewer. Second of all, Katie the Turtle hasn't really been one of mine since I switched to Days. Because she used to, Katie the Turtle was one of my very first ever followers. But... When I switched from nights over to, to days, I think that's when she's asleep. <laughs> yeah. You know? But yeah. Yeah. And now, and now, she's one of mine. Yeah, she's, she's yours. <laughs> Katie's I, a free spirit. I don't I, think anyone can stick a claim on Katie. I'd fight you for Katie if, if I didn't stream when she's usually asleep or whatever. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Because the other reason I know that is because when I would start my nighttime streams... She'd be like, oh, I just woke up a little while ago. And I'd be like, okay. 
<laughs> and I still love you, Katie. I love you so much, Katie. You know that. Let me, let me even do this. Love. Um, yeah, but it's it's just funny because my wife even knew the name. Like, most people yeah. I talk about, she, she doesn't. Like, if I say Loina or Lassane, like, she knows who they are. But even other people, like, um, like, Bord Volk, she'd be like, who? I'm like, I've talked about Bord Volk a million times. She'd be like, no. Yeah, yeah. But she knew <laughs> she knew Katie the Turtle, you know? Can I actually just say, whilst we're on the subject of your wife, I have to say this. I love your wife. She's pretty I need awesome. To get it out there. I need to get it out there. I mean, I've, I've there's been a couple of times now where I've had the pleasure of being on a... Like street, like maybe we've done like the drunk, the drinking with nerds, and she's coming at the end, and we, you know, have the the the, the private drinking with nerds. She is by far one of my all-time favorite people ever that I've never met, but so badly want to meet. Yeah, um, you know, it's a shame because, like, I feel like she doesn't. Like, she's got low self-esteem sometimes, but not other yeah. times. Like, you know what I mean? She doesn't mm -hmm. understand how awesome I, uh, uh, how awesome a lot of people think she is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, this is not even just in the internet, but, like, in in her workplace and people, they, they meet her and they're just very impressed by her. She's a very mm -hmm. dynamic, interesting person, but, you know, she sometimes just feels very self-conscious and doesn't, yeah. I'm like, you don't understand. People think you're fucking awesome. You know, I, do you know what? It's scary how much we are alike because it's the same for like, Rachel. Like, Rachel is one of the most talented people I have ever come across in my life. And I'm not just saying this. You ask anyone that's had the pleasure of speaking to Rachel or seen any of her, like, artwork or anything. Like, if you go to her channel right now, she has, like, drawings on her channel that she's drawn herself from scratch. And they're fucking awesome. Like, they're so good. She does her own emotes. She's done my emotes for me. She did her own emotes for her. And they're all brilliant. She's just, whatever she turns her hand to, her cooking, like a couple of years ago, she started doing a, a chef's course and she was banging out panna cottas and beef wellingtons and stuff like this. Like there were nothing. And she's like, are they supposed to be hard to do? And I'm like, you don't understand like beef wellington, proper, like world-class trained chefs. If you say the word beef wellington to them, they crap their pants because it's one of the hardest dishes to cook. You've cooked it like three or four times now. And pretty much every single one's been perfect. Like every single one's been pretty much spot on. You don't and like, but she she doesn't have any confidence in herself. This is why this is another reason why I love Twitch. This is one of the reasons why I'm so thankful for Twitch and the and having met the people I've met because through Twitch, because she's seen how addicted I got to Twitch. She thought it was just something stupid and it was gaming and that was it at first. Mm -hmm. and she didn't quite understand it. Then she came onto it and I said, look, come on, meet some of the people that I game with, some of the people I've talked to. See if you want to do a bit of streaming yourself and see what you feel. And the confidence that she's got from doing this, it's like a light's gone off in her and finally she's starting to see that she that is actually some that she's worth something. That she isn't just somebody that should be sitting there quietly doing nothing. Like nobody is, but she's somebody that should be out there giving letting people see her gifts. Now she's finally starting to do that. And it's like, thank God, like, thank you, Twitch, because you finally, I've spent nearly seven years of us going out saying to her every day, you're fucking amazing. You're awesome. Like, have confidence. She's like, oh, 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 oh. and then she came on Twitch and then suddenly, all of a sudden, everybody else was going, you're fucking awesome. You're incredible. Show everybody. And now she's like, oh, well, they're saying it, but you know, cool. All right. Well, they're saying it. That must be something that's true. So you haven't spent the last seven years trying to tell you this, you know, but... You know, do you know, you know d -Bock, correct? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Same thing happened with his wife, b -Bock. So... Mm -hmm. He's uh, awesome, by the way. Oh, Very I creative. love, I love yeah. the both of them. Um, yeah. But yeah, d -Bock was on the palaver, and a lot of time, dude, like, I can't get off the line with him when I'm talking to him sometimes. It's like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I gotta pee. And he's like, well, go and come back, because I gotta ask you something else. I'm like, okay, so... I, Come back. And one time after one of the plavers, we were talking for like another hour off stream. And then his wife comes on, B comes on, and she's standing there and she's kind of talking. And he keeps saying to her, like, he keeps saying, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get her to stream. And I'm just like, just do it. Just do it, B. Like, it's fun. Like, there's no pressure. If you, if you don't like it, then you just don't ever do it again. It's not like you're committing to anything, and you might like it. It's a fun hobby. You see how much Debak likes it, you know? 
Yeah. And uh, she di- and now she does it, and uh, she I think she streams more than Debok does. Like she's always <laughs> on, and she's drawn on her tablets, and like in the proper nerds, I think she's designed like five or six different emos for different people, and she, and she said the same thing that now she really understands how much of a morale boost. And so it's weird. I keep hearing that, and and even to a lesser extent, Coyote Wildfire and Little Shiki, you know. Yes. Coyote was really doing it, and Little Shiki was just sort of doing it too. But then when she started to feel that, you you feel it kind of grab you, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait, I get it. And now when I go hang out with the two of them, like, I'm not just talking to Coyote Wildfire and his fiance. I'm talking to two streamers. I'm yeah. talking, like, the three of us are all peers, you know what I mean, who all get it. Yeah, totally. It, it's There's a weird thing where it kind of clicks on. I mean, for me, it clicked for me a good, I'll say about a year ago, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I was, I was doing the streaming and I was having fun with it and I was doing like four days a week for two to four hours. Like, well, first of all, when I was doing it at night, I was only doing two hours a night, like three mm-hmm. or four days a week. But then when I switched to days, I was doing four hours a week, four days a week. And then I bumped it up to five and then I bumped it up to six hours a day instead of four. Like you just, all of a sudden it's just like, you get to these moments where streaming just sort of clicks for you, you know? And I've actually gotten to the point where I'm like, I really want to do six days a week, but I don't, I don't know how I'd fit that in my schedule. See, it is. I I find that like once, once you hit a rhythm with Twitter, like with streaming, it becomes like it becomes a lot more than just streaming because the thing is uh, the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand when it comes to the streaming is it's not just the stream it's getting to interact with your, like your regulars and then also getting to meet new people who have similar interests to you and stuff like that so that's kind of it's kind of an addiction because yeah. it's, it's, it's such a good buzz especially when you meet new people it's such a buzz to meet new people and get to know them. And then you, you connect with people from all over the world. And it's just, I, I love it. That's one of that's one of my biggest, I've met so many people through this. And I've got so, like, when I first started Twitch, like if you watch my first stream, it's so cringy. It's the most cringy thing in the world because it's literally like the bog standard PlayStation stream with the little text box that PlayStation give you, no camera, and I'm sitting there talking to myself, doing like gameplay, and it's just like there's nobody even talking to me, and I'm just talking to myself. And you fast forward to now, and it's like I can do overlays now. I've you know I'm so comfortable with doing things. I am now at that stage where I now feel comfortable that I can now start helping out other people. You know where, like if you told me when I first started this that I would be at the stage where I'm telling I'm giving people advice and helping their channels grow and helping them hit affiliate, I would be like, yeah, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to hit affiliate. And now I'm sitting as an affiliate feeling like, you know, I can give back to people now on this. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I've, I'm at a stage now where I never thought I would be. Like, I'm sitting with 300 followers, which blows my mind. I have subscribers, people who will come back and resubscribe to me, and I'm like, do you realize you're, you're wasting money on me? Like, you do realize your hard-earned money that you go out and work for, you're giving to me. Like, you do realize you're doing this, right? And But they come back, and it's like, I never thought I'd be at that stage. So now, like, for me, I don't just see it as, like, when I come onto stream, I see it as an opportunity. Like, so uh, one of the newest people that I've met, and I'm, he's one of the nicest guys that I've come across on Twitch, is called Bear Banter. One of the nicest guys you'll come across on Twitch by a mile. And he was like struggling. Well, I wouldn't say struggling, but he just wasn't getting the followers in. He was getting the streams and he's got the numbers, but he just wasn't getting the followers. And he joined Chaos and everyone was like, this guy's fucking awesome. Like, I don't understand. And we managed to help him get to affiliate by all showing up to his streams, watching him, you know, so the numbers were this and then other people were coming in and we got him to affiliate. And I was so happy because, you know, this is somebody who came across my stream out of nowhere. Oh, I've got a mention. Oh, he's there. There you go. That's him. That's Bear Banner there. Um, but yeah, like, and it was such a, a random thing because it was literally, I was playing Fortnite. He used my sad sound effect, which is the Scrubs sound, sad thing. And he's like, that's Scrubs. And I was like, oh my God, you're one of the first people to ever say that. I can't believe you just got that. And he was like, yeah. And that's that's how we bonded. And that's the kind of thing I love about Twitch. It's like the smallest thing can start 
an amazing friendship. And you wouldn't have never met these people had you not been on here doing these things that we do and, you know, putting our own little twist on our sound effects and stuff like that. You would never make these friends. And that's what I love about Twitch. It's like, you know, you can help people and you're making new friends and everyone can grow together. And that's what I love about this. Dude, I will say, you just to give you a word of warning, you will get to the point where people start looking up to you and asking you for help all the time. Yeah. And you have to start being ready to set boundaries okay yeah i'm just gonna let you know right now over the weekend okay i went and counted how many different direct messages i got different people how many different people direct message me because they know i don't stream on the weekends so they know that that's a good time to try to get in touch with me on 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 discord yeah 23 23 different people over the weekend like i streamed for three hours on saturday and then I spent almost the rest of the day on Discord calls or indirect messages helping people. Yeah. You have yeah. to be willing to say to people, I can't right now. Yeah. Um, like someone came into my stream and was asking me these questions and they're like, can you take a look at this? And I'm like, no, I'm streaming. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. get in touch with me over the weekend. Like yeah. this, this was like a Tuesday. I'm like, no, man. I go, if you can't, I go, I told him, I said, listen, I'm not trying to be crude here and I'm not trying to be crass. Yeah. Message me on Discord and I'll see if I can get in touch with you and I'll see if I can look at it. But if you want an immediate answer, dude, go to Google. There's yeah. so many tutorials out there. And, and if you if, if you do that and you can't, and you still need my help afterwards, I will 100% promise I'll help you. You yeah. know, but, but look at some YouTube videos first. And then, because yeah. like the stuff he was asking me was so basic and it was so vague. He's like, how do, how come I can't get the video game to show on screen? I'm like. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, mean, I think this is another reason why Chaos Discord has become such an important part for a lot of us is because it's kind of an unwritten rule now in our Discord that, so if somebody comes, if we meet somebody and we think they're cool. So I'll use Bear as an example. I Bear came onto my channel, we started talking, he seemed cool, so I dropped the Discord link and said, join the Discord. And without even really having to say much to him, he was on everyone's channels. He was saying hello to Wild, and he was going along to see other people, and he showed an interest in everyone. So it kind of it's kind of an unwritten rule amongst kind of like the founders and kind of like the people that we, you know, we always a game with, that if someone is willing to give us some of their time to help our channel grow, then we will give it back to them. Mm-hmm. And that's what our unwritten rule is. That's kind of like, we kind of, cause like how, like you, as you are the wise senpai, as another senpai of mine, I do take on a lot of what you said. And we've, we've had long conversations before about being wary of helping people. So we kind of put an unwritten rule where if somebody shows no real interest or nobody really wants to kind of socialize with the discord, but yet they're expecting us to help them. We'll be like, look, we'll help you if we can. Yeah. But there's other people that, are on our chats from the minute we go live to the minute we finish. And then when we finish, they'll go to the next person and they'll be on their stream and then they'll go to the next person. And they're not really asking for help, but we're going to help them because they're helping our channels grow. I- you are not showing any interest. So it's like, you're just here for the, for the, for the, what I like to call it, the artificial help. Like you're just here for us to come into your channel and hover about and give you the numbers, but yet you're not willing to show an interest back at, at us. And it's kind of like, I want to tag what you're saying right now because yeah. Catmouth said, and I think he was just joking, but I'm going to, I want to, Catmouth said, yeah. how do I get more followers? And I responded, yeah. open bobs. Yeah. But dude, this is not like no joke. Here is the way to get followers. Preach. Go out and support other people that you like. And I don't mean go up and show up in their channel and be like, yeah, I stream too. Don't even say that. Just go and be in their channel and be active. And I always say, if you've got six hours in a day that you can spend on Twitch, cut two of those out. Stream for four and then spend two hours hanging out with friends. Make new friends. Because, so there are certain channels you can go to um, that are like, oh, follow for follow. And you just go in their, their channel and all their chat is, um, follow for follow active. And then you follow them and say, Hey, I followed you, Joe blow 23. And they'll be like, okay. And they follow you back. As soon as you do that, doesn't yeah. do anything. 
That doesn't do yeah. anything. That just are all that does is artificially oh. inflate your follow number, and it does nothing. You yeah. don't care. Here's the thing, and this is something I, I I believe, and I've had partnered streamers tell me this is not true, but I firmly believe once you get affiliate, your follower number means nothing. Mm -hmm. The number of people you have following you means absolutely nothing. What matters is, on a day-to-day -day basis, how interactive your chat is. Do you have right. people showing up, chatting with you? Even people like Wild One, who shows up every day to the start of my stream and is like, Lurk mode, Rev. I'm at work, but here's a lurk. And then he'll pop in like once or twice during the stream like, Oh, on a coffee break, how's it going today? And that's yeah. it. And that's amazing. That is the kind of support you want. You want yeah. that. You don't want someone who's just going to follow you and give you a plus one to your following. That doesn't do yeah. anything. And how do you yeah. make that kind of connection? By going to their channel and being yeah. friends with them and being interested in what they're doing and being like, oh, dude, you know, even, even you can even be like, oh, man, your audio volume is off. I can't hear you. Like... Dude, holy fuck. The hardest part about streaming is getting my audio balance right. When someone comes in and says your music is too low or your music is too loud, I'm like, thank you so much. You know, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I, don't know. I mean, I, I, I completely agree. I mean, I must admit, I trust... At the beginning, I got quite fixated on the numbers. Like like I said, like when I first started, I got stuck on like 13 followers for ages. And it got to the stage where I was thinking, look, I ain't never going to get another follower. This is getting to the point where I'm just like, I don't see the point of this anymore. And then I met you. Mm -hmm. And I met the nerds. And then my channel started to hit numbers and it started going up. And I thought, all right, cool. Maybe, you know, thank God I met the nerds. And I've always said that you ask anyone who ever comes, speaks to me, I credit the nerds for me being still active today. Because if it wasn't for when I so randomly found your channel, I probably wouldn't be streaming still. Because I, I was so close to the stage where I was like, oh, this is just not working for me. But now I've got to the stage where people say, oh, how do I get more followers? I need followers. No, no, no. And I'm like, you don't need followers. You need viewers. You don't want followers. Like, if someone drops it, like... So the best way I can say it is, like, Rachel's the perfect example. Rachel hasn't streamed now for, like... I can't remember the last time Rachel streamed. It's been that long. And yet she has steadily gone up followers because she is on everyone's channels constantly, talking away, modding for people... And stuff like that she goes off and meets her own strike so as much as like me and rachel have our core group we both have separate streamers that we go off to like there's people that she knows and she mods on their channel but i re i don't really know that well mm -hmm. and there's people that i mod for that she doesn't really know that well so it's like we've got off and met and done, done our own network and and we have but she's like i said she hasn't streamed in forever and yet her channel is steadily growing and growing and growing and growing because she networks and i think that's the one that's the main word that people need to learn is forget followers and all that stuff, network. You mm -hmm. need to network. Because as soon as you, it's, it's amazing how if you spend two hours floating about different people's channels, saying hello, getting interested in their game, showing that you know you're interested in them, and if you make, if you click, you click, you'll suddenly go back to your channel the next day and you'll have like five or six new followers. And like, well, how the hell did that happen? I wasn't even streaming. And it's like, that's how it happens. Your channel grows by you going around and saying hello to people. That's how it works. Like, don't focus on the followers and all that focus on making your content the best is what it is making yourself as comfortable as you possibly can be in front of the camera because the more comfortable you are the more comfortable people are going to be chatting to you and that's how it works yeah that's it that's plain and simple that's twitch plain and simple you network and you enjoy what you're playing and people will flock to you yeah but if you're just sitting there saying follow me follow me they'll go they'll go and find somebody else it's you know that's the way it works and that's you know Yes, that's, that's it. A, that's, a that, that's it, man. That's I think it. I think what you said too also really, really is important. When you do go live, have fun. Yeah. Like if you're not having fun, your viewers will know it. Yeah. Um, I I've done things where I'm like, I'm gonna play this game today, and I'll play it for an hour, and I'm like, Yeah. I don't I don't like this game. I know I said I was gonna play it for an hour, but I'm switching. I I don't. I don't like it. And and that's another thing too. I would uh I, I just want to address Fox Ron. Fox Ron said I wish I had more I could network more, but my time is so limited. Figure yeah. out where your time is, figure out how to manage it, and then take 25% of whatever you have and spend that on networking. Okay, 
great guy. One of my one of my favorite people in in the proper nerds that you probably don't know at all. His he's in he's in uh, Team MZ, and he's in the proper nerds. His name is Mystical May. Do you, have you ever heard of this guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen him about. Yep. G- great guy. I love him. But honestly, shit at networking. Like he's <laughs> terrible at it. What he yeah. does is he goes live and he's live for twelve hours. And I keep telling him like, dude, like. If you did an eight hour stream, that would be an insanely long stream. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, why not do an eight hour stream and then like do two hours at the, take two hours off the front and back and use that for networking. Like, yeah. but Mystical May is just one of those guys that I'm like, he could be blowing up so big because he's, he's interesting. He gets into his streams. He's great at communicating. I think yeah. he got so much potential but I just don't see him doing that networking. And I'm like, I keep, yeah. I, like, I told him a bunch of times and finally I'm like, okay, that's not going to happen. You know, yeah. he, he would rather just go live and do a 12 hour stream. And I'm like, buddy, yeah. you know, see, I, 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 another thing is from what you were saying about going on and playing, like, I'll, I'll hold my hands up when I first, when I first started streaming and I, and I kind of found a niche game that people, a lot of people watching rainbow six siege. Now, I like Rainbow Six Siege and I play it casually, but I found that when I played it, I got a lot of viewers. But it got to the stage where I was playing it so much, a lot more than what I ever used to, that I found myself really not enjoying it. And as much as I got my viewers, and as much as they were in there, they rarely talked. They were just there to just watch and not, not really communicate. And I think that's because they could tell that I was. But now, like when, like say with Fortnite. Now I got into Fortnite a couple of months ago, and got addicted and loved playing Fortnite. I love playing Fortnite. Fortnite for me is one of my all-time favorite games. When I get my new computer, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a shot. I promise. Oh, we will play Fortnite. I will guide you through the Fortnite. All right. I promise, because I love PUBG. You know, Dude, it was oh. just a. He- I got. We are starting to run out of time. I did just want to say, um, uh, in regards to that, before you move on from it. Dude, yeah. there is a trap you can fall into where you think, well, this game gets me viewers, so I'm going to keep playing this game. Dude, I, that's why I pick one main game a month and I play it. Last month, it was Darkest Dungeon. Dude, by the end of the month, I was I was ending streams with 90 viewers. 90, like that game was just dumping viewers into my stream. Mm-hmm. And it felt so good. But I was really, at the end of the month, I was like, I love this game, but I know I'm not going to be able to play this game for another week or two. Like, if I play this game for two more weeks, I'm going to be sick of it, and I don't want to get sick of this game. And I moved on, and so this month, my game is Factorio. And I've met so many amazing people, like Innertooth, um, who's in chat. I've met so many amazing people who have come out and helped me learn this game that I hated previously. Yeah. And I know when I get to the end of the month, I'm going to have to put Factorio down and move on to a new game. I have to. Yeah. yeah. You know. I actually I actually might push it a little bit because I'm building my new yeah. PC next month. And so oh. I'd like to I'd like to kind of coincide the new game with the new PC. Yeah. So I might do Factorial a little bit and speaking of which, by the way, fucking your community Chaos Streaming came through so huge on that PC goal. Um I had $750 that was my goal. Now, obviously, I'm not buying a PC for $750. i am going to be draining my bank account and building a PC and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But in my head, I had like, okay, if I make $750 and I drain my bank account, I can build a really nice computer. And, uh, like, dude, Chaos Streaming Team, like, holy shit. Your stream team probably came through with, like, $400 or $500 of, that, uh, of the $400 or $500. Dude, I, literally, I literally, like, I just threw out a tweet and I just said, look, guys one of my all-time favorite people on Twitch, and if it wasn't for him, I would not be here today. He needs our help. And if this guy's computer breaks and he can't be streaming, you don't understand how uh, how much that will affect so many people. We need to help. And I just threw out the tweet. And I knew that some of them would come through and maybe give you like a little donation. And I was back by how much people were just coming to go, boom, there you go, boom, there you go. I was like, wow, okay, cool. And it's, so, it's not even just the big donations. Like, obviously, you came in and dropped 100 bucks. Wild came in and dropped 100 bucks. But even, like, some of the people came in, I think, I, I, I apologize. I don't really remember without looking it up. But, like, you know, even, even members of Chaos Streaming came in and dropped, like, hey, man, good luck, and they dropped, like, five bucks. Like, <laughs> It's all so huge, but we are running out. I'm sorry, Jan. Didn't I tell you? By the way, I always say, first seven minutes takes longer than the next 53. Like, 
Yeah, it goes so quick. <laughs> it goes so, but we are running out of time, and I do like to keep the palaver right to an hour. So, yeah, for anyone who's new here, here's what we got to do. You got to hang out for a second. Here's what we do. We always do it the same way. We're going to do a thing. Then we're going to say goodnight, and then we're going to host into someone. Please, 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 please stay tuned. Go over, say hello to whoever we host, show them some love. You know, it, th whoever we host into is going to really appreciate it. And uh, I know I'm going to host. It's someone who's been super supportive of my stream. And uh, I know that you'll like them. So you get, need to go over and say hello to this person. But before we do that, it is time for the thing. Are you ready, James? Do you know what the um, thing is? I'm not sure. Oh, I, I like so. it so much better when the person doesn't know what the thing is. All right. We're going to do this thing. Then we're going to say goodnight. And then we're going to do a host. All right. James, you've been an excellent guest. People need to be following you at twitch.tv slash jamesxanarchy if they aren't already. But... You get the final word. The final word. Rev's awesome. I'm awesome. Scotland rules. Bye, Iron Brew. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Rev is logging out of the system. Please stand by for a raid on another Twitch streamer. Establishing connection now. Please hold.